In this project, we'll create a drawing of a cartoon space scene, image concept credit to Spoon Graphics from their Illustrator tutorial, and in doing so, we'll continue to develop a number of fundamental Photoshop skills. Let's begin by creating a new document. I'll press Control N. And let's make sure our dimensions are 2100 by 1500 pixels. Make sure that this is indeed set to pixels. Click Create. Now I'm going to unlock this background layer by clicking the padlock icon. I'm going to select all with Control A and I'm going to fill with Shift F5. Now I'm going to change the color to some kind of dark blue that's going to represent my outer space background. I'll click OK and OK and I can deselect with Control D. I might as well name this layer background and now I'll make a new layer and I'm gonna call it blue planet now I need the elliptical marquee tool so I'm gonna click and hold on this item and change to elliptical marquee and I'm gonna use the new selection mode up at the top now I'm gonna click hold shift to drag a perfect circle and I'm gonna fill this circle so shift F5 to fill change the color to some kind of light cyan blue. Click OK and OK and Control D to deselect. Now I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to call it Blue Planet Craters that I'm going to use to make some craters on my planet. So I'm still on elliptical marquee but now I'm going to switch to add to selection mode. And actually I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I'm going to switch to the zoom tool and I can just click and drag to the right to zoom in a little bit. If I go too far, I could just press Control minus to zoom out a tad. And I can always hold spacebar to reposition my canvas if I need to. Back to the elliptical marquee tool, I'm going to have this on add to selection mode. And now I'm going to drag some ellipses that are going to represent my craters. When you have some that you like, go ahead and fill, shift F5, color, color, and set it to a slightly darker color than your planet. Click OK, and Control D to deselect. Now I can make these look even more realistic by using a layer effect. So with the blue planet layer, with the blue planet craters layer selected, I'm going to click FX and choose inner shadow. Now you can see right away I have a neat effect here. Play with these items till they look how you want. For example, you can change the angle of the light. You can change the distance of the shadow. You can change the choke is sort of the hardness of the shadow. And the size is sort of the blurriness of it. So I'm going to play with my distance and the choke. And you can also adjust the opacity to determine how dark those shadows are. I think I like mine about there, and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I want to make a shadow for the entire planet. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to name it Blue Planet Shadow. And I'm going to begin by retrieving the selection of the entire blue planet. I can do that by holding Control and clicking on the Blue Planet Layer thumbnail. Now I need to subtract from this selection to get what I want. So I have the elliptical marquee tool selected and I'm going to switch to subtract from selection mode. Now I'm going to start up here and click and drag. I don't need to hold shift this time. And I'm going to go till there's about a sliver left that I like. I'll release and you can see I have this crescent shape. I'm now going to fill shift F5 and just choose black and I'll click OK. Now I can deselect with Control D. Now since I don't want my shadow completely black, I'll just change the opacity of this layer to something that I like. About 30% looks pretty good to me. I'm going to zoom out now just by pressing Control 0. And I'm going to start working on my next planet. So, elliptical marquee tool, switch back to the new selection mode. I'm going to click, hold shift, drag. And before I fill, I need to make a new layer. So, new layer, 
going to call it red planet. I'm going to press shift F5, choose color, switch the hue to red, and a sort of dark red I'm going to use. Click OK, and control D to deselect. Now I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to call it red planet spots. I'll zoom in a little bit. This time I'll just press control plus a couple times, hold space bar, reposition my canvas. And I'm going to switch back to the add to selection mode of the elliptical tool and I'm going to start drawing some more circles. This time I'm going to make some that overlap with the edge of space here. And we'll see why because we'll create kind of a neat effect by doing that. However many you want, whatever size, but please make a few that overlap with the edge. Once you're ready, press Shift F5 to fill, choose color, and I'm going to choose a slightly brighter color of red. I'll click OK and OK again. Now I'll press Control D to deselect. Now I want to trim off the edges of the spots that I created that are overlapping space. It's quite easy to do. I'll hold control and I'll click on the red planet layer thumbnail to select the planet again. Now if I were to press delete right now, I would delete the opposite of what I want. So I need to go to select, choose inverse, and now I can just press delete on my keyboard and I've trimmed off those areas that I didn't want. I'll press control D to deselect and I'm going to make a new layer call it red planet shadow and repeat the process that I did earlier so control click on red planet thumbnail switch to subtractive mode click and drag to leave a sliver left shift F5 to fill set the color to black click OK deselect with control D turn down the opacity until I like my shadow Good. Now I can zoom out with control zero. And this is looking pretty good. I'm going to create an Earth-like planet now. So I'll make a new layer. I'm going to call it Earth Planet. And I'm going to zoom out a few times here to give myself some more space to do this. I'm going to switch back to the elliptical marquee tool, switch back to new selection mode, and I'm going to start the selection well outside the canvas bounds. Now I'm going to click, hold shift, and drag a selection up like this. Now I can move this before I fill it if I want just by moving the mouse inside this area and dragging it a little bit. So I kind of like it around there, maybe up a little bit more. And now I'm going to fill with Shift F5, choose a color, and I'm going to choose some kind of aquamarine color that's going to represent the oceans of my planet. Click OK and OK. Control D to deselect. I'm going to zoom in more by just pressing Control 0 and I'm going to create a new layer and call it continents. I'm going to create these continents using the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure that I'm on add to selection mode, that's important, and I'm going to start just clicking to draw some polygons that are going to be the continents of my planet. I can close them just by returning to the original starting point or I can also make some by just double clicking to close the selection. Notice how I'm making some that overlap with the edge of space. This will also create a nice effect. We'll trim those areas off in the same way that we did with our red planet. So make some land masses here just by using the polygonal lasso tool. Zoom out a tad and make one that sort of uh, overlaps with the border of my document. And when you have what you'd like, Shift F5 to fill, set your color. I'm going to set mine to some sort of green to represent land masses. Click OK. OK again. Control D to deselect. Now as I did before, I'm going to trim off those areas I don't want. So I'm going to hold control, click on the Earth Planet thumbnail. I'm going to invert the selection by choosing Select Inverse, and I'm just going to press Delete. Now I can press Control D to deselect. 
I'm going to zoom out a little now, create a new layer. This is going to be my Earth Planet Shadow. I'm going to go back to the Elliptical Marquee Tool, and I'm going to drag a selection, some kind of oval, and then I'm going to fill it with black. Shift F5, choose black, OK, Control D to deselect, and turn the opacity down to however I like. That looks pretty good to me. And our Earth planet is now done. I'll zoom back in with Control Zero. And I'm going to start making another planet. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this one Yellow Planet. I'm going to start up in this corner, hold Shift, drag a selection. And then I'm going to fill it, Shift F5, Color Color. And I'm going to make it some sort of subtle yellow that's not too saturated. Click OK. OK again. Control D to deselect. For this planet, I'm going to add some stripes to create a neat texture. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it Yellow Planet Stripes. And I'm going to hold Control and click on the Yellow Planet thumbnail. I'll zoom in a little bit. Control plus, Control plus, hold space to reposition. And I want this selection made so that I paint only within the planet. I'm going to push B for brush. And I'm going to set my foreground color to some sort of um, gray, some kind of a light gray like this. I'll click OK. And I'm going to customize my brush options. I'm going to set the hardness to about 80%. And if I were to start painting on here now, you can see it only paints within the selected area, which is good. However, I want a little bit more interesting effect than that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. And I'm going to go up to my brush options icon here, the brush settings panel. And in here, I'm going to click on shape dynamics. And then I'm going to change the control mode to fade. And I can see immediately I have a preview of what my brush stroke will look like. If I give it a try, I can see it fades off with distance now. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo because I want the fade to happen over a little bit more area. So instead of 25 here, I'm going to try making it 50. Now I'm going to draw a line across and I can see how it goes a little further. That's more like it. I'm going to make another one. This time I'm going to make it like 65. I'm going to start on this side this time. And if I don't quite like it, I can always hit undo and make another one. Might try one at even 75. And I can adjust the brush size if I want, so I could make one that's a little bit larger. And I could make one or two that are a bit smaller. And I can continue playing with the fade distance as well. So do this until you have some stripes that you like. And when you're done, you can close the brush settings panel. Before I clear this selection, I'm going to go ahead and create a shadow layer for this planet. So I'll go create a new layer. Call it Yellow Planet Shadow. Back to my elliptical marquee tool. Make sure I'm on subtractive mode. Draw a selection that overlaps. I'll fill the crescent shape with black. It's already set to black. I'll click OK. Control D to deselect. Turn the opacity down. And I've got a nice shadow on this planet. I'm going to add some rings to this planet now to create another neat effect. So I'll create a new layer. And I'm going to call it Yellow Planet Rings. There's a number of ways we could do this. I'm going to do it the following way. I'm going to hit hold control and I'm going to click on the yellow planet thumbnail. This is going to bring up my selection of this planet again. Now I'm going to do something new. I'm going to click on select and I'm going to choose transform selection. Now I'm going to I'm going to distort this selection until it looks like the rings that I want. The way that I'll do this is first I need to hold down the alt key on my keyboard. And then I'm going to grab one of the side handles and pull it outwards. Now I'm continuing to hold the Alt key, 
and I'm going to grab the top or bottom handle and pull them down. I can do that until they're about the shape that I want. And now I want my ring slightly tilted, so I'm going to move the mouse to, the, uh, to one of the corners outside this bounding box, and I'm just going to rotate it a bit. And then when I like it, I'll hit Enter. Now we're going to use the Stroke tool, which basically traces a selection with pixels. So I'm going to go up to Edit and choose Stroke. For my color, I'm going to choose some kind of purple for my project. I'll click OK. And I think a width of about 7 pixels will be good. And I'm going to leave the location on center. That will work for this. I'll click OK. And as you can see, there's now a purple line where that selection was. I'm going to give this planet multiple rings, though. So before I clear the selection, I'm going to go back to Select and do Transform Selection again. Now I'm going to go to one of the corners of this, and I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift at the same time and make my selection a little bit smaller. I'll hit Enter to apply, and I'm going to stroke it again. Edit, Stroke, click OK. And I'm going to transform the selection yet one more time. Select, Transform Selection, hold down Alt and Shift, drag it a little bit larger. I'll go even a bit larger than that. Hit Enter to apply, Edit, Stroke, click OK. And now I'm going to do Control D to deselect. This looks pretty cool, but I have this problem where this part of the ring should really be hidden because it's behind the planet. It's fairly easy to fix. I'm going to begin by holding control and clicking on the yellow planet thumbnail to restore my yellow planet selection. Now I'll just grab the eraser tool, I'll press E for eraser. I can make sure I'm on the eraser tool if I want to by clicking and holding and choosing this. I'm going to set a hard brush edge, which it already is at. And now I can just erase this, and when I get to the edge, I don't have to worry about erasing the part I don't want because it's constrained to this selection. Now I'll press Ctrl D to deselect, and I'll press Ctrl 0 to zoom out. As a finishing touch to this scene, I'm going to add some stars to the background. To do this, I'm going to use the Polygon tool, which I can find here in the toolbar by clicking and holding and choosing Polygon tool. First, I need to change the fill color to white, since I don't want purple stars. So I'll click on the color chooser, just set this to white, click OK. And now there's one other thing I need to customize. Up here at the top, I need to click on this gear and check the box that says star, so that it's a star rather than just a polygon. Now sides here chooses how many points the star will have. I'm going to make several different kinds of stars as I do this. Before I start drawing, I want to hold down the shift key and actually I'm going to hold shift this entire time. You'll notice I didn't make a new layer because when I use the polygon tool it automatically creates a new layer for me. So I'm going to click and drag and I've just made a five pointed star. So I'm going to make a few of those of varying sizes around my canvas and then I'll mix it up and try making some different ones so I'm going to change this to four hit enter and I'll make a, some four pointed stars in here too maybe a couple six pointed stars and when I like how it looks I can call it a finished project I hope that this tutorial has been useful. Please check out my other videos to continue learning about Photoshop.